friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. Got a uh, video coming out of the archives again. This one's on a Yamaha guitar, and we're going to show you how we set that up. And uh, there, I think there's a few tips and tricks that, you know, maybe I've mentioned in the past, but maybe I give a little bit more detail about how I do a few things. So I think you'll enjoy this one. It's a short one, I believe. 2018 so far, though, I just got to tell you, has not liked me a whole bunch. The only good thing that's happened so far, uh, well, I mean, health and wellness and all that stuff aside, the family's doing well, but the only good thing uh, in terms of uh, my business that's happened so far is I uh, incorporated finally. I probably should have done that 30 years ago or more, but I did get it incorporated, so now it's Rosa Stringworks LLC. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Uh, but the things that aren't going so well, listen to this short list. Well, you already know I cut a lot of firewood, and that's going crazy because the temperatures have been nuts. I have burned three full trailer loads of wood every week for the last three weeks. Now, that's a lot of wood, boys and girls. I, mean, I don't know anybody that burns wood like that. And that's just to keep the house at 68 degrees. <laughs> I know. Insulate. I've done that. I've done. It's just... 6,000 square feet of concrete and it's hard to heat. But that's not even the bad news. The bad news is the furnace went out in my rental house. That wouldn't have been so bad because it wasn't a real serious problem. I fixed the furnace right away but you know we didn't realize the furnace had gone out because the renters were up in Michigan or some other state, I don't know, for Christmas holidays and New Year's holidays. And so they weren't there to tell us the furnace was out, and uh, the pipes froze. They broke, went all over the house, flooded everything. You know, fortunately, it didn't hurt the renter's material too much. Just made a big mess out of the floors and the ceilings and just about everything you can imagine. Just a disaster. But I got it at least livable for them when they got back. So that was, you know, furnace and plumbing. Well, now, just yesterday, on the same rental part of the property, now this also serves other places, but it serves the rental house, it serves my barns, it serves my new, uh, my old workshop, which is going to be a new rental house, and that is the well, and it went out yesterday. And not to mention, but you've, some of you saw the little short clip I put out on computer problems. And incidentally, that was the wrong clip. It didn't, the, up, the upload took the wrong one for whatever reason. I don't know if I did it or what. But anyway, the, so my computer's just been giving me dogged troubles every single day. And it's all about USBs. It's saying that I have something connected that doesn't work. I've disconnected everything. And it just keeps barking at me and giving me trouble and it stops working and it lost the drives and I mean it just went nuts. I've got it back together. It's sort of limping along and that's how I'm able to put this video out for you today. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. We have a Yamaha acoustic guitar here today. Yamahas are real nice guitars. I think they're great bluegrass guitars. They sound wonderful. There's a lot of guys in the Rolla, Missouri area that play them. Uh, this one did not come from Rolla, Missouri. As a matter of fact, I can't remember where it came from. It came from out of state. It says Yamaha Guitar FG140. First impressions on it, uh, it looks like a pretty you know, good guitar. I don't see any real problems, uh, major problems anyway. Back and sides are mahogany, the neck is mahogany, the top is spruce. Uh, let me look at the top and make sure it is solid spruce. It does look like that. I believe it's from the 1970s according to the customer. Then when I get down to the details of looking at it, what I see is the neck angle is not the best. And I'm exaggerating. The neck angle's like this. You know, it's up. Uh, you know, it's only slightly up. It's it's almost flat, but it's it's actually, you know, you know, I could almost call it flat. It it's almost uh, it's almost flat. It's just it, it. But I guess what what's throwing me off a little bit is that there's more underbow in this neck than it needs. I doubt you'll see that. Yeah, maybe you can. There's quite a bit of underbow in this neck. When you're looking down these flat. 
you basically want to see this right here just about be level with this. Now, this, this top of this fretboard should just about be level with this. That gives you just a slight angle down. And uh, this one here is about level, but there's quite a bit of underbow right in here, and you might be able to see that. I, that's how I do it. I know I'm not as scientific as some of the guys that get down and measure with feeler gauges and all that, but I've been doing this for so long, and, you know, building miles and miles of horse fence, getting those fence posts in perfect alignment, I think train me for doing this because you, you look down those posts and you can tell if one of them's just that much out of alignment, you know. And that's kind of the way I'm looking down this. I'm looking down and I can tell which one of those frets is out of alignment. Well, in this particular case, they're all out of alignment because there's a quite a bit of underbow. So we're going to work on the truss rod on this a lot. We're going to uh, look inside to see if there's any issues because there is a, a hump here. This is not a huge hump, there's, but there is a hump. I don't know how much you can see of the hump. The hump is there. It's not real bad. Uh, you know, I, ideally you want to see no hump, but you know, it's there and they're almost always there in almost all guitars. Another just first impression is, and I don't know why they did that, there's a lot of overspray in the hole. All I would have had to do is put a little newspaper or something in there to keep that overspray from going everywhere, but they didn't do that. So it's here just basically for setup, and I think we can improve it quite a bit. Uh, by the way, there is one problem instantly with the uh, setup. When you hit the... You can, I think you... If you get on it pretty hard, you can hear the E string. It's got a pretty good buzz in it. And I believe it's just off of the first fret from what I can see here. The first fret looks like it is really close on the, uh, on the E string. The rest of them are not so bad, but that first one's really, really close. So we'll probably make a new nut for it. Although we might not. That'll depend on after we get you know, everything else work, looked at and set up. Uh, the nut might be okay by the time we level all the frets and all that kind of thing. So you never know. But, uh, it, but it does buzz a little bit, especially if you hit it hard. In my opinion, the action's awful high. Uh, the customer says he likes it around 125. Now that's pretty darn high, I think. I would say right now it's actually about that. I'm, I've got a 120 in here. Uh, it's probably closer to 130, actually. Let me see if I have a 130. I think I do. Yeah, it's, it's right at 130 exactly. Well, it's even a hair higher than that. I would say it's about 135. So right here at the 12th fret with my 130 measurement, it actually goes under there. It might even be 140. <laughs> it's pretty high. So we're going to get uh, make some major improvements on this. He, apparently he must like it a little high, so we'll probably set it somewhere around you know, 100 and, and 90, something like that. Um, certainly won't go uh, any lower than that since, that's, since it sounds like he's looking for a fairly high action. But we can, we can uh, accommodate him, make it play much better, and uh, we're gonna get started on it right now. The first thing we're gonna do is take strings off and we're going to check the truss rod. What I did was I just loosened the strings real good. I'm looking down the neck again, and now the neck appears to be pretty darn flat. I'd say there's just a hair of underbow, but the underbow now is in this area right here. So there's actually a little tiny amount of underbow right here. Otherwise, it's pretty darn flat. There used to be quite a bit of underbow through the whole thing right through here, but now it's, it, it all appears to be right here, and it's mostly on the base side. I don't hardly see any underbow on the treble side. The treble side looks pretty darn flat. So we should be able to work with this. Let's just uh, see how tight the truss rod is. Um, we'll have to take this cap off. I'll bring you back here in a minute. Okay, the first issue I ran into, trying to get this uh, truss rod cover off, the screw would just spin and spin and spin and wouldn't come out and wouldn't come out and I tried to lift it out of there and then finally when I did lift it out of there this part here is actually busted and uh, the, where the screw went through and bro broke across here it's you know not a big deal at all we'll we'll glue that right back it's not a big deal although I'm curious that maybe tightening the truss rod might pull up on that just a little I'm not sure but we'll we'll cross that bridge here as we check it out 
the customer has a wrench made specifically for this one, although I think about anything would work. Now I'm just checking here just to see. If I start to tighten it, it just feels real tight. So whenever that's the case, you're better off not to force it. You're better off to see if you can loosen it a little bit first. And that's even tight. Boy, so that makes me wonder about the underbow here. Wow, that's really tight. And it's it's came it's it's loosened up now, but that first amount of turning was pretty tight. I'm just wondering if uh, the truss rod itself is really working in this guitar. It uh, you know it might be glued in place or something and not really free to move. Uh, there could be a problem. By the way, the customer sent prepayment on this. Um, he sent me a, a trillion dollars and. Uh, I'm not gonna fall for this. Uh, you know, I know what he's gonna do. He's trying to trap me with the IRS. He's he's gonna pay overpay me and then see if I turned it into the government. Well, I'm not gonna fall for it. So I'm sending that back to him. He's gonna have to pay me by check the exact amount. I'd like to ask you a favor. I'm trying to do you a favor by putting these videos out every week. And I'd like for you to uh, show your appreciation. Just click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button there and also click the bell icon and the bell will let you know that I've put out another weekly video. That's loose now, but that's really making me wonder what's going on because uh, that was quite tight and yet there was a lot of underbow in that neck. So now I'm going to... Uh, go back to quite tight again maybe even a little quite tighter <laughs> if that's such a thing it's getting pretty tight I'm sure that's tighter than it was and I don't see an overbow I was hoping to see a little bit of an overbow in the neck and as I look down it I'm not seeing that so uh, it looks pretty flat still Maybe a tiny, tiny hint of overbow, but boy, I mean almost nothing. So I'm going to tighten it a little bit more, and hopefully I'm not going to break something here. Looking down it, and maybe there's a hair of a, a overbow now. So, you know, because there was so much underbow, I think we're going to have to be there to get the... Uh, neck to be fairly flat. So I'm going to tune it back up here now and just check to see what that neck looks like before we go any further. I've got it tuned back up to rough pitch there. I don't have it perfect but it's close enough to check the uh, underbow here and um, I'd say we improved it a hair but only a hair. Uh, it's still got plenty of underbow more than it needs I'm sure. I guess the accepted way to do that is to uh, press on these uh, at these outer frets here and look at it, but uh, I can look at it and tell you there's quite a bit of underbow there. So there's more than it needs, I can tell you that. Not quite as bad on the treble side, but it's got enough there too. You can Enough that you can still play the string Maybe you can hear that. You can play the string without it buzzing. <laughs> so it's still quite, you can play the string here too. So there's there's quite a bit of underbow there. More than it needs, in my opinion. Yeah, you want some relief, but I like very little relief. That's the way I like to see them set up. This, uh, people talk about 10, 12 thousandths. That's very little relief, actually, right there when you're talking 10 or 12 thousandths. This is probably closer to 20 thousandths. I mean, it's it's quite a bit of relief. So we're going to loosen this again. Just risk tightening this a little more and see what happens. You should always loosen the strings before you tighten a truss rod. You should really never tighten a truss rod under tension. What I'm also going to do and this is kind of strange, but I'm also going to try to physically pull some uh, some bow in this neck with my arm. I'm, okay, you got to be careful doing this, but I'm going to lay my arm right over the meaty part of the neck here uh, and the neck block, push down, and I'm pushing down with my left hand on the peg head, and I'm pulling up with my hand on under the neck, 
to try to get some neck bow in there, back bow in there, but to help it out a little bit, help that truss right out a little bit. But it's pretty, it's pretty stiff. It's pretty stiff. All right, we're going to try tightening it a little bit more. The strings are loose. I really hesitant about this because you can break them. Okay. I don't feel much I don't feel comfortable going much more than that. So I've got it about as tight as I think we should go. Uh, you know, I just doubt that this truss rod is working real well. Again, it could be that it's not installed correctly. Maybe it's got too much glue around it. I, I don't know. There's just something that it's not letting. I mean, if, I, if I'm explaining a truss rod, if you could think of the rod as going in there as an underbow like this, when you tighten it, it should pull up. And uh, that's basically what a truss rod is. So, you know, it, it should pull up here. And it's not doing the pull up thing very well, or at least it doesn't appear to be, because we're not getting any straightening in the neck. I'm not even going to bother bringing it back up to tension now because, uh, you know, I've got the truss rod as tight as I'm comfortable going, and I'm not going to go any tighter than that. Although it probably could go a little tighter and it probably wouldn't break, you know, I'm not willing to take that risk. So uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take the strings off of it, clean up the fretboard, do all that kind of normal setup work, and we'll bring you back as we start to restring it, I think. You know, I was just checking these strings, and they just feel heavy to me. This one here, according to my calipers, is an 18. 17 is standard, I believe. Um, let's see what this one is. This one's not extra heavy. It's only a 12, so it's okay. But they just seem, they just feel really stiff. This is a 26. Uh, this one's only a 34. That's not too bad. This one's a 45. That's pretty, pretty stout. 45, and this one's about a. Well, this one doesn't feel, doesn't measure that hard but it sure feels stiff measuring 54 which would be on the lighter side I think this guitar probably should use light strings based on the neck angle based on the uh, over you know the extra underbow it has I think we should use light strings when we set it up the customer might not be into that he may not like that but that's what I think it should have just based on all the circumstances that we're facing here with this guitar there's just so much tension on heavy strings or even you know there's some difference between mediums and lights so you know you might as well take advantage of that and uh, make the guitar play better and, and set up better and uh, I think that's what we should do in this particular case this guitar does have a pretty good case of OMFNS if you don't know what OMFNS is uh, it's just my reference to old man fingernail syndrome. It's, I'm not saying the person that owns this is an old man, but uh, it has that syndrome. In other words, uh, the old guys, they get those old rock hard steel fingernails, you know, and then they grip the neck pretty hard, and their fingernails dig into the fretboard pretty bad. This one's dug in pretty good. I'm getting a lot of it out. I don't know if I'm going to get every bit of it out, but uh, we'll get most of it. But my suggestion is keep your fingernails cut, and uh, especially if you're playing a rosewood fingerboard, because <laughs> they do dig out fairly well. There's still a pretty good couple of grooves in here, and each one gets a little less as you go up the neck. But uh, there's quite a bit of quite a bit of trenching going on. Once again, I have buffed out the entire guitar. I'm now applying the Renaissance Paste Wax. In my opinion, it's one of the very best things you can do to make an instrument, uh, especially a guitar, sound a little bit better. Is paste wax the top. It just 
crisps up the finish, makes the guitar sound just real nice and clean and crisp. Just gives it a good sound, in my opinion. Some guitars you'll really, really hear a difference. Other guitars, not so much. But in any case, I, it, it never hurts it. it so, uh, you know, it's, it's a good thing. Plus, it's a good protection for the finish. If you get caught out in the rain or something, you know, it's gonna water's just gonna slide right off. So it's it's a good thing to do anyway. This wax goes on and comes right back off. You don't leave it on very long. Turn your rag very frequently. You want to overlap the areas you've done. It wouldn't hurt to wax the whole guitar. You, you get a, a good return on everything by waxing the back especially. I typically in the shop here just wax the tops. But uh, it doesn't hurt if you want to wax the back too. Uh, it'll certainly improve the overall sound of the instrument. Okay, we're going to make a new Durantler nut and saddle for this ones that are there presently. I know this for sure is plastic. I haven't tested this, but my guess is it's plastic as well. It's hard to tell sometimes on the saddles. But uh, there, I would replace this saddle anyway because there's play in it. Um, it's not as tight as it could be. It's, it's not terrible. I see them much worse than this. But, uh, you know, we can improve it, so let's just improve it. We've got this Yamaha guitar all set up real nice and pretty. New antler nut, cleaned up that whole fretboard, looks like brand new. Got the antler saddle back here. Got her all buffed out, waxed up. Looked inside it, and uh, what I found was that the bracing is very delicate inside this guitar. Smaller than average, definitely smaller than your standard like dreadnought type guitar. So, to me, that indicates that this guitar ought to be using light strings, which I believe is, since it had medium to heavy strings on it, that's why this top was pulling up so much, and probably why there was too much underbow in the neck. Looking down at it right now, I'll be totally honest, there's certainly less underbow in it than there was. There's still enough underbow, more than, more than it needs probably, but not, not nearly like it was. And uh, I do have the, uh, I have the custom lights on here, the 775s from Martin. And uh, those are uh, 52 to 11, I believe is what they are. I'd have to look again to be sure. And I have the MFX 775 strings on here from Martin. And those are custom lights, 11 to 52. Now, those feel just right on this guitar to me. And, you know... In my opinion, when a guitar is designed for light strings, which I believe this one is, I could be proven wrong. Somebody could look it up on the internet and say, no, it's meant for medium strings. Well, that may be true. I'm not going to argue one way or the other. I'm looking at the inside of it, and I see light braces, and that tells me it ought to have light strings. And so anyway, uh, the point is that uh, people mistakenly think when a guitar has light strings, it's not going to produce the sound or it's going to sound twingy or you know thin or whatever but if it's designed for those light strings you know it's it's all relative and actually you're doing it at injustice probably by putting heavier strings on it it can't vibrate the way it should vibrate here listen to this thing it's got a heck of a punch like this it's got all the sound it needs and I'm not really even hitting it that hard so I think it's a very good guitar I think it's set up just the way it ought to be set up I've sent a note to the customer, Hope, hopefully he's going to approve of the light string setup. He may not. But anyway, that's the way I set it up because I believe that's the way it should be set up and I believe that's the way it should stay over the course of the future of its life. 
It also has a relatively small neck, which is probably another reason the neck was had so much underbow in it. So let's just play my theme song on this guitar here. Nobody loves me, nobody cares If life is empty or filled with tears I've searched for true love, looked everywhere Nobody loves me, nobody cares Hope you enjoyed it, thank you for watching. Tell your friends. Thank <laughs> you.